so you shot me an email um, a couple days ago about a breakthrough transition metal free cathode um, and a new paper that was published by some researchers out of the University of Maryland, way out of my depth. Um, but I thought it was really fascinating and you have sort of convinced me that this could be a big deal or it leaves us a lot of sort of moonshots in the battery materials world to think about. So as I'm doing my research about Tesla, we've been on this constant quest to figure out what goes into batteries, how to make them, how to scale that, how to do it efficiently and cheaply. Um, this is totally in line with all that. So really pumped to learn about this. So Sean, maybe you could tell us um, a, just like a two second about who you are and what your background is and then help us break down uh, this, this really interesting paper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've, I've been studying battery chemistry for, for six or seven years. I've worked in the industry for four years um, at a couple of companies that you mentioned here, uh, Nano One Materials in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Sela Nanotechnologies currently uh, in the Bay Area. Um, I'm super pumped about battery chemistry. Um, I love what's happening in the industry. I love your channel and that would be cool to talk about it. Definitely. And so this paper that you've sent me, um, it actually had a Jeff Don quote. That's why it piqued my interest. Everybody's favorite Jeff Don, uh, Tesla researcher, where he was saying something about how this had one of the most, I guess, creative or innovative battery chemistry solutions. So maybe you could break down sort of at a high level, like what caught your eye about this new paper that came out? What was so exciting? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's actually not super new. It did come out about a year ago. Um, the thing that, you know, it, it came out of University of Maryland and, and Jeff Don really commented on it. Um, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people in the industry had a similar feeling about it. Um, and the reason why this is really interesting is because it's actually a transition metal free cathode. Um, and sort of, as you know, and your viewers know, um, you know, the, the cathode is, is a very significant component of, of the cost of, of cells, there are a lot of issues as associated with transition metals like cobalt, um, potentially nickel in the future. Um, and so having a transition metal free cathode is really exciting for that reason. You know, um, when we're looking at scaling these technologies, um, while this is just a single academic paper, you know, the, the fundamental science has to be there. Uh, the supply chain has to be there, you know, um, and being able to make a high energy density cell without transition metals um, and there's a lot of other cool details I'd be happy to talk about that paper um, is in my mind a huge deal. Um, and I, I, I think like you have a healthy skepticism about most battery breakthroughs. So, you know, it's good to be cautious. It's good to really understand the details here. Um, but just that fact alone, no transition metals from the cathode is very exciting. Um, yeah. And I want to dig into that a little bit because, you know, we always hear about the next battery breakthrough. I'm sure you are too. Um, what particularly made you so fascinated about this, you know, given it is in a lab, it is years away from commercialization, but, you know, you read tons of papers. Why was this something that you were like, whoa? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that I could just take a step back and, and, you know, the way a traditional um, lithium ion cell works, you know, all the ones that have been commercialized today, you have an intercalation cathode with transition metals. That's a big cost component. Um, and you move lithium between that and, and typically a graphite anode. Um, and the way that this is different actually is, is, you know, just no transition metals. Instead of, um, you know, moving lithium back and forth, which you are doing as well, of course, it's a lithium ion cell. Um, but the redox chemistry going on in the cathode is actually a, a halogen intercalation mechanism. So you're putting chlorine, you're putting bromine in between these sheets of graphite, uh, much in a similar way that you would put lithium into sheets of graphite in an anode. Um, you know, it's, it's quite stunning that it has a high potential of four volts versus, um, versus lithium. And, and what that means is, you know, the, it, it's comparable, if not better than sort of the state of the art in terms of uh, theoretical energy density. And, and theoretical energy density is really the, you know, the, the crystal structure, how much lithium can you put in per, per unit mass per, specifically? Yeah, and I, it seems like we've already gotten to the point where these batteries are high quality enough and energy efficient enough to like solve a lot of the use cases, but it's about how we reduce the impact of building a lot of them um, and really scaling with those supply chains. And so that's where it seems like the innovation is here is like we can use these, you know, way more ubiquitous metals and materials that are way easier and cheaper to work with to actually build these same quality batteries. Is that kind of the gist of this breakthrough? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, I think the breakthrough is that they're not using metals. Um, you know, of course there's metals in the cell components and all of that, but the cathode itself, um, 
there's no transition metals. You know, there's just lithium chloride, lithium bromide, graphite. Um, that's what makes it super cool.